Hi there, welcome to Grain TV. It's Tuesday, March 8th, one day before USDA's crop report. Let's take a look at Grain Edge's trading platform and see where we closed. In Chicago, corn was up one and a half, beans up two and three quarters, and wheat also barely higher, gaining two and a half cents. The market's really just sort of marking time here, uh, looking for any sort of major driver that will change the direction of this, this path we've been on. We did test lows last week uh, that held up in the case of corn, beans, and wheat. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens after tomorrow's crop report. We'll talk about those crop report estimates here in a sec, but first let's take a look at some of the news. Yesterday after the market closed, USDA uh, state agencies in Kansas, Texas, and Oklahoma gave us fresh crop condition ratings for the wheat crops there. Both Kansas and Oklahoma saw a two to 3% drop in the number in the percent of the crop that's in good to excellent condition while texas managed to move up slightly but is still below 45 percent so overall you know sort of we got confirmation that the crop is having some problems the dry conditions the uh, heat that's unusual for this time of the year uh, is causing some stress on the crop which is somewhat supportive for wheat other news out this morning soybeans got a lift thanks to some new export sales announcements by USDA. We had an announcement for 70,000 metric tons of old crop uh, soybeans and 210,000 metric tons for new crop. Uh, in other news, this was more global in perspective and affected the stock market. China's exports were at a six-year low and that sent stock prices globally and in the U.S. down quite a bit on that relatively bearish news. Let's take a look at what USDA may have in store for us tomorrow. And not surprising, this is a report that has no real surveys uh, in the card. We'll have to wait till the end of March to see our first formal survey of planted acres for 2016. So right now we're just sort of looking at tweaks, if you will, on the ending stocks numbers for the U.S and the world numbers. On the U.S. side of the equation, most people are looking for a reduction in corn exports and a reduction in wheat exports. We've been talking about how dismal the pace has been in those two markets for some time. So overall, the, uh, the expectations are for about a um, 17 million bushel increase in corn carryout and about a 10 million bushel increase in wheat carryout. Uh, soybeans are expected to be about on par, although some people are thinking that maybe crush numbers could be slightly lower. On the uh, world carryout numbers, most people are looking for better uh, production figures out of South America, so that could potentially increase slightly the corn and bean uh, carryout, but overall wheat is expected to be pretty much unchanged. So overall, there's not expected to be much of a reaction on tomorrow's report, but what if that report is indeed flat uh, and has no real spark? Does that mean we're necessarily not going to see any sort of significant moves? I'm curious as to what these large short positions in the market are going to do. And let's take a look at the recent CFTC uh, reports for wheat, corn, and soybeans. And I want you to really focus in on just how, how large these, these short positions are by non-commercial traders. And what you can see is that in all three markets, we had a, a big drop in what was, in what was mid-January, that around that January 12th low that we've been talking about. And most recently, March 1st, the last data we have from CFTC. Both. So all three of those commodities saw very, very large shorts on March 1st and on January 12th. Now, what's interesting, if we go back to January 12th in corn, and on this chart, that is around the left, uh, left part of this, I'm sorry, the right part of this graph, uh, you know, and we can see that we basically bounced up to that 378 range. Most recently on March 1st, we tested it again uh, down at 355, and now we're starting to inch higher. And my question is, what are these shorts going to do if we get no further major bearish news? Are we setting ourselves up for a catalyst for a move higher? Likewise, in beans, not only did we test that mark here recently on March 1st, but we've tested that 855 mark not twice, not three times, but actually four times since harvest. So over the course of five months, 
after U.S. harvest, while we've had the South American growing season that looks pretty much ideal with ample rainfall, uh, higher production numbers than what we started the season with, we have been unable to take out 855. So do not, in my opinion, be overly bearish the situation we're in. We have pounded this market down. We have thrown all the bad news at it we can, but I think the tide is starting to change. The U.S. dollar is coming to a, uh, a lower level. You know, we're starting to see that uh, the U.S. dollar change course, which is supportive for uh, our global trade prospects. Uh, you know, we do have some dryness in the plains. That is at least something to be noted. Uh, problems with wheat in India. All these things are not major drivers right now, but they could be setting the stage for the shorts to really exit this market. And my concern is if you're overly short or overly bearish here, a neutral crop report tomorrow could just be the catalyst we need to see uh, short positions start to exit this market and really drive prices higher. That's all we got today on Grain TV. As always, visit us online at grainhedge.com to learn how we can help you in your own grain marketing situation or give us a call 877-472-4607. Grain Hedge is pleased to announce a new tool called Technical Alerts. Technical Alerts is free to our trading clients and delivered by email first thing in the morning every trading day. Technical Alerts is a powerful, easy to use system that provides quality trading opportunities. Each trading opportunity shows a chart and analysis providing clear price targets and risk potential to allow you to make an educated trading decision. The commodities covered include grains, livestock, crude oil, currencies, bonds, and metals. Technical Alerts look at historical chart formations and compare the current environment to the past to form concrete trading recommendations. Let's take a look at how to interpret a technical alert. At the top, you will see a red or green indicator arrow which signifies the market's likely move. Red shows when weaker prices are expected and green for when higher prices are expected. The summary section shows the expected price target and the expected duration it should take to reach the target. Also, technical alerts provides both support and resistance to help you identify key levels on the price chart. Underlying support is where technicians believe there is a level of buying interest, while overhead resistance is the price level thought to trigger more active selling. The support is marked with the letter A on the corresponding price chart, and resistance is marked with the letter B. Below the chart, you will see the data interval of the bars. For example, a one-hour data interval means the chart pattern was constructed from a one-hour bar chart. And when you are using the Grain Hedge trading platform, you can use the pull-down on your chart to change the bar interval to the appropriate time period. As always, we strive to provide you the best tools to improve your trading and hedging activity. If you have any questions on how to use technical alerts, please contact us at 877-472-4607 or by email at support at grainhedge.com.